Okay, so okay, training RVMs with contrastive divergence. So why? So what is the problem with GIP sampling? We have been getting away by this large number of steps, right? We'll run the Markov chain for a large number of steps. In practice, that large number of steps is really large, right? Because the guarantees hold only asymptotically when n tends to infinity. We'll have to actually run it for a large number of steps. And remember that this loop is inside your outer loop. That means for every training instance, you'll have to run the Markov chain for that many time steps. And that's obviously expensive, right? So even though this could give you a tractable way, it's definitely more tractable than computing that original expectation, but still expensive, right? Each individual step of this process is easy, but collectively still you have a large number of steps, okay? So it can be very inefficient because at every time step, you need to run the Markov chain for many, many time, uh, every iteration you need to run the Markov chain for many, many time steps. So in practice, we use something known as K contrastive divergence. So let's see, just see how the story is progressing, right? So we had this expectation. In reality, we should have done the summation over infinity. So we have approximated the infinity by some R in Gibbs sampling. And now we are going to approximate it by something even more ridiculous than R, okay? So let's see where we get there. So just to reiterate, our goal is to compute these two expectations. We already have a simplified formula for these two expectations. The first expectation we don't need to worry about because that does not have any summation. And also the first expectation only depends on the seen variables, right? The training data. It only depends on the training examples. The second expectation depends on the which samples? The samples drawn from the Gibbs chain, not from the training data. Okay, so the first expectation is about the training data. The second expectation is about the sample data or the model data, right? It's also called as the model samples because these samples are drawn based on whatever your model tells you about these probabilities. Based on the current parameter configuration of the para model, you compute these probabilities and then you sample from there, right? So this summation is over model samples and this summation, which is non-existent, is above, is over empirical samples, right? the data samples, okay? Now, contrastive divergence uses the following idea. Instead of starting the Markov chain at a random point, V is equal to V0, okay? No one questioned me when I started with V is equal to V0. What was the problem with that? I said I'll just pick uniformly any of the possible values. What was the problem with that? Think in terms of images again. I could have started with some very random noisy image which does not actually is an image, which is not actually an image, right? It could just have been those noisy pixels. So if I start from there to get, get to an actual, where do I need to go eventually? To something which looks like an image, right? That's the samples that I'm interested in. So starting from something very random, reaching there is going to be a very difficult job. I'll have to run it for many, many time steps to come out of this noisy example and start producing things which actually look like images. Everyone gets that, right? But that's the only option we had. We didn't know what the initial distribution is, so we just took that. So what contrastive divergence says is that instead of starting from this random configuration, start your chain from your current training sample. You are going over the training data. VT is your Tth training sample. Just start the Markov chain from there because you know that you're starting from something which is actually a sample from your true distribution, okay? So that itself simplifies something, right? It, it simplifies you reaching to that distribution, okay? Second is, now you run Gibbs sampling for k steps and you denote the sample at the k step by v tilde, okay? So this is what I'm doing. I'm starting with something which was observed in my training data. So instead of having a random v naught, I'm starting from a sample which came from my training data. Given this visible units, I can sample the hidden units. Given the hidden units, I can sample the visible units and so on, right? So this is exactly the block process that I was talking about. Given the hidden units, I can sample all the visible units. Given the visible units, I can sample all the hidden units and run this for k steps, okay? And whatever I get after k steps, I'll call it as v tilde, okay? So what has happened here is, let's try to understand this in more detail. Initially, when your model is not really trained, what will happen? You started with VS, which was a good training instance. You will compute some hidden representation for that. 
which is actually not meaningful. Why? Because the parameters are not trained. Using this not so meaningful hidden representation, you are again trying to reconstruct a V1. What will this happen happen now? You will get a very bad reconstruction. Effectively in this step, what have you done? You have computed a hidden representation and then try to reconstruct from there. So ideally if I had given it a blue sky, it should have given me back a blue sky. But initially this is not going to happen. Because your model is not trained well, you will actually get very bad samples from this chain. Okay? Eventually as your model starts learning better and better, what is going to happen? Starting from a training instance, you will start getting samples which look very much like the training sample. Because this hidden representation would be more meaningful. Hence, whatever you sample from that hidden representation would be more meaningful and so on. Right? So, that is what uh, contrastive divergence relies on. And finally, they do this ridiculous thing where you approximate the expectation by a point estimate. So, we had approximated infinity by R in the in Gibbs sampling. Now, we are going to approximate R by a single sample. So, this entire summation which was over all possible values of V we are going to just replace it by a point estimate. We are just going to estimate it from that single sample that we have drawn after k time steps. Okay? So, this is known as k contrastive divergence. The term contrastive because this is in some sense a true example and this is in some sense a negative example. right? Because initially your model is not trained. So, drawing these negative samples and if you look at the actual uh, computation you have this expectation which is computed using a training sample and this expectation which is computed using a generated sample or a sampled sample and you are taking the difference between these two. right? So, it is some kind of a contrastive thing that you are doing there. Right? Okay? So, you get that. So, you have replaced the second summation. So, you have replaced the second summation by a point estimate. So, there are three key ideas here. One is instead of starting from a random point start from a true point, a true image. Instead of running the Gibbs chain for many, many, many time steps, just run it for k time steps where k is going to be a small value. Instead of approximating the expectation by a summation over a large number of samples, just approximate it by a single point estimate. Right? So, these are the three ideas clearly takes care of the computational problems. Right? And the main thing here is that you are starting from a point in the chain which is already reliable instead of starting from a random point. Okay? Fine. Okay. So, as the model becomes better, your V tilde not X tilde should start looking more and more like your training samples. And once that starts happening, what will happen to this gradient? This was the gradient. Once your model gets trained and you are going to replace this second summation by a point estimate. So, now this is a difference of one sigmoid and another sigmoid. Over time as your model has started becoming better and better, what is going to happen? These two terms are going to cancel out each other. Right? Because given the image, you computed a hidden representation and you should have gotten the same image back if your model is really learned well. So, as you reach convergence, your gradients will become smaller and smaller and your parameters will stabilize. Does that make sense? Okay? At this point, you will say yes to anything, but okay. So, that is basically what I have written here. And now, just to give you the full algorithm, it is the same as uh, Gibbs sampling, more or less input, output, initialization. Instead of randomly initializing it, I am initializing it to the training data that I had. Again, I am going to do this block Gibbs sampling, block Gibbs sampling, and now this gradient. Earlier, I had approximated the expectation by a sum. Now, I am going to approximate it by a point estimate. Right? So, V d is the empirical sample or the data sample and V tilde is the model sample. Right? So, it is the difference between something computed using the data sample and something computed using the model sample. Because the summation has disappeared now. And the same story for B and also C. Okay? So, this is k step contrastive divergence because you are running this Gibbs chain here for k steps. In practice, something even more ridiculous is done. You actually just set the value of k to 1. Okay? And still this works very well. So, actually I am wrong. I am not wrong. I am just partially right. 
in the assignment you are going to do Gibbs sampling as well as k contrastive divergence and you will see the contrast between both of them right what happens when you run one here right. So, in practice instead of running this for k time steps and taking a v tilde you actually run it only for one time step and just take v 1 ok fine. So, that is all I had. Uh, so, with that we end RBMs finally after a very very long story and the next thing that we are going to do now is variational autoencoders followed by GANs and I guess probably that is where we will end.